Okay, so we are going to talk about the thermodynamics of mixing, and um, I am going to express to you what is my delta G mix, delta S mix, delta H mix. And um, first, I'm going to introduce about the gas, gas mixtures, and later, I'm going to talk about liquid, liquid mixtures, and this is something called, uh, at least you heard about what is called regular. They, this is a term they use, regular solution to that. This one is essential gas gas mixtures is pretty simple to, to drive. <coughs> one thing to actually, I, I can go and jump ahead for ideal gas gas mixtures. Ideal gas do not have any interruptions. Okay? So if you have an ideal gas, the situation is you have an A in the one side and B in the other side. And you're going to remove the barriers, and you're going to make make things miscible. A, B, A, B, and so on. And so before it was separated, and what is going to happen in terms of actually enthalpy of mixing? They don't have any interactions. So as far as they are concerned, they don't have any uh, experience any interaction with the neighbors. So whether they are interaction exists, uh, there is no interaction before and after. So because of the no interaction, okay, by definition, delta H mix is zero. This statement is actually as valid as it is because the gas do not have any interaction. So mixing the contact interaction, the interaction within their surroundings, there is no interaction between this molecule, so therefore, you don't see any. Whereas a regular solution theory is not delta H mix is not zero, okay? And that's what makes it complicated. Different people has attempt to kind of uh, put some mathematical formula to describe the delta G mix and the delta H mix and delta S mix. <laughs> So I am going to start with uh, essentially a gas mixture. Okay. So this one is, I anticipate already that they are not so, there's no interaction involved. So in the beginning, I, I have a little, like a little yeah. valve, but in this side, everything is an A. The other side is everything is a B. Okay. So, and then I'm going, for the convenience, I'm going to say this is at the pressure P, this is at the pressure P. Uh, and the temperature <coughs> is constant. So temperature and pressure is defined, and then this is good. And the, the, the amount of A you have is Na, amount of, amount of B that you have is Nb. So that's how the system is described. This is a before. And then after is you're going to remove the barrier. So everything is free to move around. B is unoccupied. So this is an after. And then I'm going to give you a thought about, as far as A is concerned, what kind of pressure they are kind of feeling? Pressure for A. Their pressure. What kind of pressure they feel? Do you feel? Yes, right? They don't get, I mean, they, they just feel what, what they are being exposed to. So this is a pressure before. So does a B experience the pressure P. So I'm gonna circle this pressure they, they experienced before. When I remove this, because the pressure is same on both sides, what's my final pressure or total pressure? P. The same as P, right? Same as before, but this one now is a summation of partial pressure contribution from A and B. So as far as the A is concerned, they are feeling pressure, partial pressure PA, and this is concerned, they are the partial pressure PB. So, 
So all I did is, it's the same pressure on both <laughs> sides. I have a barrier and I just simply remove it, let them mix. Oh, we know this is actually mixing it. And then the pressure they're feeling it, before was a higher pressure P, now reduced to the partial pressure PA. And you know the partial pressure PA in the mixture is expressed by this. So we all know this kind of the pressure reduction because uh, XA is always smaller than one, greater than zero. And XA plus XP is one. So, so that's the, the other one is also smaller than one. So those are the, their relationship. So the, they have a remaining same total pressure, but what, as far as A is concerned, they feel the different fresh pressure now. And that's what actually makes them to drive the mixing. And I'm going to show, show you that. So, so this is a one piece of information that I know. The second information that uh, we talked about. Okay, so uh, okay, when there's a pressure change, and I'm going to use as a mole at this value because that's uh, related to chemical potential. When there is a pressure change, the heat free energy change is expressed by dN, right? And then this is the same as RT over P. So that's how this has come about. And so this, this equation has been derived before, but it's going to come up very many, many times. So this is a pressure difference, yes? So if you do the separation of variable, this one goes to the other side. One over P dP is a natural log P, uh, so that this is an equation that we, we come about. And so we can use it, change it to the chemical potential, so which is chemical potential is chemical potential at pressure P naught, that's RT chemical potential P over C. So that's how essentially when you are changing the pressure from P naught to P, such a change, how, when there's a pressure change from P naught, which is, a, we call it one bar, standard state, and that's a chemical potential at one bar, and that's how the pressure is going to relate it to the chemical potential. So uh, I am going to use this relationship to talk about the chemical potential change before and after. So let's, let's talk about it. So, uh, okay. So is a, if this is a gas missing. So before, so NA at pressure P, NB at pressure P. Now after, NA at pressure P, NB at pressure P. So this is the same scenario where you have these two component systems. Each one of them has contributed to the, free, uh, the chemical potential. But their pressure was P. Now they are changing to partial pressure of PA. That's the relationship. So, um, so initial Gibbs free energy. So this is an initial. So you have a number A, um, number of moles, okay, times. What do you want to add it up? Chemical potential of an A, right? Which is on the left-hand side of that box. And NB, chemical potential P. And here, I'm going to borrow this relationship shown up here. Okay? So this is as... <coughs> 
n a times mu a standard plus r t ln p naught over p. Same thing here, n b mu a mu b now plus r t. So that's what before, and now this is changed into G final, which is a, a mu A, same thing, mu N A, mu A, N B, mu B. Okay. So it's, it's the same argument, but now what is different now is the press, final pressure that in this final stage is now PA. And this is PB. Nothing, nothing, nothing really changed other than that. So NA, you, you, you start to get used to writing this equation now. Pressure, as far as A is concerned, this is a pressure they are feeling it. Uh, compared to their standard pressure, which is one bar. NB, UB. So, so far, so good, okay? So what I'm not going to say is, uh, if you're looking at Gibbs free energy final, minus Gibbs free energy initial. If you do that, and this is what I define it as, just simply mixing A and B, what is my delta G mix? That's my definition of delta G mix. And so if you subtract this one uh, by this one, this P naught all going away, and this one survive, and then the, you are going to see NA. And then this is also going away, so it's an RT. So that's a, that's a kind of the midway form that I can I can have. Uh, so how do we describe this mixture? And the thing that they want to do is in the composition of X A, and I can relate that the partial pressure over total pressure in terms of gas composition. Do you see that? Do you see this? Right. So how can I change that to save my time? This one is? XA. That's right. And what, what is this? XP. Yeah. This is an XA. XP. Okay. So I took care of that. So this is cool. This is nice. And then looking at this NA and NB going in front of the RT. And this is a related to the composition too. And what I'm going to do is, I am going to use this N is NA plus NB. Everyone knows that, right? So they have, this is a total number of moles. And then I'm going to say, okay, so one is, uh, is a N, NA plus NB. That's what I call XA plus XB. So what that means is now this part is also related to what I call N times XA. And this one is also N times XB. So I'm trying to extract the information as much as, it, as I can to express the delta G mix in terms of composition and, and something that defining the total number of moles of the system. That, that is a, the property. 
So having, having done all of them, this scenario coming down to a very simple equation that gives a, is actually many research projects are using this <coughs> equation. So let's, let's have a look at that. So to summarize what is shown out is delta G mix is now, I can call nRT. So let me take this one out. Okay. So this is the same RT, RT, and N. So I can take everything out. And what's left here is XA, natural log XA, XB, natural log XB. So this is a this is a final form that we use a lot. So this is for the, when you have a scenario of the gas mixtures, and that's the, that's the final equation. The form that I also like is delta, delta G mix over nRT. If you do that, what it means is this is a Gibbs free energy, molar Gibbs free energy, divided by some sort of the energy term. And this is left with something that very simple to remember. So this is a, this is an equation that works really well. Okay. And then I'll I'll go I I need to get back to you on this. X A is smaller than one, bigger than one. You remember when you do the when I plot x versus natural log x, you know how, how does it look? When x is one, what's the value? Zero. Zero. So that's the number. And so therefore this graph looks like this. Right? So this term, each term contains a natural log of compositional in terms of mole fraction. This is all ended up being you're talking about here, which is a uh, negative numbers, right? So therefore, this is a negative. This is a negative. 